At the tender age of five, I punched a boy who was making fun of my name. Don't worry, he survived. And I learned to use words. So tonight, I'd like to take you to a place where we can talk. Welcome to the theater of recognition. A place where today's politics and ancient mythology meet to give our democracy some tender loving care. Let's face it, we need it. Here we are in Stormont, Northern Ireland's assembly that hasn't assembled for almost three years. How do we bridge all our divides? There are no easy answers, but I believe that each of us has a story that can help. My story starts with gratitude. Grateful to be freakish, French, Greek, and now British. Grateful to call several places home, to feel at home in each of them, while quite not fitting in most of the time. Remember the joke about the guy who's lost in the middle of a civil war, runs into one tribe? Are you with us or with the other? They ask. I'm with you, of course, he says. Too bad, comes the reply. We are the others. Well, admittedly, I'm lucky to have never been caught in the middle of a violent conflict, and I hugely admire those, like many of you, who have managed to build their theaters of recognition on the ruins, turning enemies into neighbors and even neighbors into friends. So how can we contemplate turning our neighbors into enemies? We need needles to burst our bubbles. My bubble, well, I've got to take you back to my story, about a Greek dad in exile from a Greek dictatorship raising his Parisian kids with mythology to make sure we didn't forget our roots. And I guess, that may be why, when I set out to write a book about Brexit, Europe and all, somehow I started processing the sound and fury of it all through the prism of archetypal myth. And I found that their intense pulse could lower ours, that their many ambiguities could open spaces for our conversations. For myth, Greek or Celtic, are not there at frozen wisdom, but for us to appropriate them and subvert them for our own purposes, as brilliantly done by so many writers and directors and refugee actors. So, Stormont women, I mean guys too, can we welcome these mythical protagonists on our political stage. Make Stormont our own for a moment, our own theater of recognition. Can you be my chorus of wise elders? You know, great tragedy, you always need a chorus to challenge the audience. You have lines that we will get to at the end. But for the moment, can you imagine yourself here on stage with me and we are rehearsing a play in five acts, bringing the ancient and the modern together. Act one. We start with anger, anger at the beginning of it all. The great anger of Achilles, remember at the beginning of the Iliad and the Odyssey. He's been fighting with another era over the spoils of war, sharing. And all of this triggered by a woman priestess called Crisis. Wow! Now, this is where you, the chorus, run in and acting every burst of anger that we see around the world. But at some point, you all come together and realize that, wow, you all come from the same source, reason, cause, that we have 
in today's world forgotten how to share. Share our wealth, of course, share the resources of our planet, share risks, share our right to dignity, share a continent, share an island, share power. What's to be done? Act two. When Pandora opens the box to release all the calamities on the human world, she snaps it back right close, panic, and keeps hope inside. Now, you may wonder, does she keep hope from us or for us? If you're a silver lining girl like me, you want to elect hope over mere optimism. But, but where do we find it? It's not a bad place to start, to follow the spiders. <laughs> and if we follow the spiders, who do we meet but Arachne? You know, the one who was transformed into a spider by the gods because she dared weave the tapestry demonstrating their misconducts with underage girls. <laughs> yeah, got it. Arachne, the godmother of Me Too, wrapping us in her web of resistance, all of us who've defied the guardians of the status quo. Arachne, who dared to make power visible. Now, Arachne is one of these rebellious mythological women now, I think that ancient men dreamt of to exercise their fear of female power. Now, okay, okay, Chorus. I know, you want to jump in with uh, some bit of gender balance. And, uh, and to tell us that, hey, don't forget all these guys who were punished by gods for their hubris because they dared Prometheus, Sisyphus, Icarus, we root for them. But of course, you know, what if we brought our kids in a bit? Like, could we do a kind of rap? Hope lies with the hubris of the next generation. They can't be tribal, they're existential. Well, you guys are gonna rehearse this. <laughs> I'm not that good at rap. Act three, in praise of ambivalence. Do you remember that Ulysses, the greatest hero of them all, did not want to go to the Trojan War? So when the Greeks came for him, he conspired with his people to feign that he was mad, throwing salt on his field and singing in the rain, until an old cunning warrior put his baby Telemachy right there in front of the plow. Ulysses stopped. He has to go to war, but what does this story tell us? The great hero is ambivalence, war, home. Now, this, I think, is when you, chorus, start to challenge the audience. I wonder, you know, beyond our tribal loyalty, shouldn't we all try to tap into our fundamental ambivalence to talk to the other side? Even in Brexit land, isn't it the case that we hear all the time control, cooperation, these are incompatible beliefs? Is this really true? Can't we kind of both be right? Can't we have a bit of each? Of course, wh while I listen to you, I'm thinking of my adolescent daughter, truly, who you know, slams the door of her bedroom to take back control every day, but a moment later she comes around and cooperates with the family to set the table. Rings a bell? Act four. Can beauty redeem the world? Do you recognize me? <laughs> I'm Ellen of Troy, the most beautiful woman in the world. 
two great armies fought over me for ten years. Without me, no Homer, no Iliad, no Odyssey. Artists have forever tried to capture the secret of my beauty. I don't think they get me. <laughs> ah, you want to know the secret of my beauty? Hint. Daughter of a swan, a god, and a mortal. Yeah, it's my hybridity. I know, you're a hybrid too. We've heard of your Good Friday Belfast agreement back in Troy. Cool. Bright blue British, deep green Irish, or both, or neither. Brown or peach, pink or blue, or both or neither. Why spin the rainbow white? This is where, Horus, you might jump in and go, hybrids of the world unite. We know our differences is what we have in common. Act five, Europa. After the war, Europeans created their union for fear of their past and trust in the future. Now they're nostalgic for that past and fear the future. Can our union be the answer to Pandora's riddle of hope? I find it funny that she is depicted everywhere, kidnapped by Zeus as a bull. Well, these days it could be Jupiter. And yet, the powers that be don't seem to see the irony when they bully in their name. So this is why I prefer to be inspired by who she really is. You know, a Lebanese princess, meaning that Europe is made of its others, landing in Crete at the very margin of our continent, because Europe's soul is in its periphery, from here to Stockholm, Sicily, Lisbon to Lesbos, perhaps even at the very margin, way beyond Europe, the very margins of humanity. So here, Chorus, you jump in and start asking questions about the politics of the day. Could it be that the British are escaping their own very centrality to the idea of Europe? Could it be that they have, would have stayed if it was a Cretan Europe, not a Christian Europe? I you know, Chorus, you have many questions, and there are many more heroes to meet, but time is almost up. And I'd like to ask if I can go back to my five-year-old self and meet that boy again, the boy I punched, remember? And tell him the bittersweet story of the beautiful goddess Calypso, who fell madly in love with Ulysses, kept him on her island for seven years. Don't tell me she forced him to stay. And by the end, she gives him a choice. Stay with me forever, immortal, or go back home to Penelope, immortal, and die. Well, we know what the guy chose, you know, wifey, he was the committed type. But I believe that Calypso actually knew the answer to her question all along, but pretended not to, and had the grace to let Ulysses think he chose his destiny. So, dear chorus, dear audience, haven't you guessed the answer all along to Pandora's riddle of hope about our broken politics? That transformative power is with you, with us, citizens, 
not as one mythical people, but as a multitude, each with our own very own odyssey, odd as it may be. So please, can I ask you, dear chorus, dear audience, to join me in a common pledge of hope. We, Storm and women, women, we stand in for the unassembled who have forsaken the power of the word. We stand against the dissenters who believe in the power of the sword. We stand for all the those yet to be counted whose power will transform the world.